Bridge audio amplifier designed with two op amps is analyzed and explained in this video. This is the 204th video in my analog circuit design playlist on YouTube. At the output of this circuit, we have a standard speaker that we can think of as 8 ohm speaker that, for example, we are supposed to deliver a 100 watt, let's say, power to this speaker as a nominal example. Of course, you can go higher. This 8 ohm is effectively between these two terminals that the speaker is applied. We want to see how this amplifier designed with two op amps is, how is it working? And then what is the level or value of the voltage that appears at the output of this amplifier between these two terminals? Uh, at the input, we have a sinusoidal voltage applied in a differential fashion between the positive terminals of the op amp number one and two. So this is one, this is two. And uh, the sinusoidal voltage is A sine omega T. A is the volt, for example, amplitude of one volt could be as nominal example. Omega is radian frequency, which is 2 pi F. And uh, for audio amplifier, we need, we need F. For example, we prefer it to support a range of as low as 50 hertz and as high as, say, 20 kilohertz nominal for an audio amplifier. Basically, we want this circuit to uh, do the uh, amplification properly for this frequency range at input for the sinusoidal voltage applied. Okay, so first let's quickly do the uh, do the DC analysis and then after that I'm going to answer uh, the question regarding how the circuit is working and also proper choices for the value of components R and C resistors and capacitor in the circuit. We have a DC supply 48 volt single supply applied and then we are using a series of these two resistors uh, and uh, the midpoint of them is used to establish a reference ground. Uh, my recommendation is something on the order of 47 or 39 kilo ohm for these resistors. So let's say 47 kilo ohm. Uh, just let's go with a, a low tolerance for these resistors. And then we have a nominal C2 capacitor, one microfarad, for example, nominal value applied between the established ground and say in this case uh, this terminal of course it can also be on the positive terminal side as well uh, and the purpose of that is just to minimize noise and improve the power supply rejection ratio uh, by having this cap or something on the order of one microfarad uh, applied here Effectively, we can think of this whole uh, circuit here for the DC supply that we're providing 24 volt DC supply to positive supply of op amp and negative 24 volt uh, DC supply for negative terminal supply of op amp for both of them. So basically, in summary, both op amps are properly biased, op amps properly biased, as I just showed. And uh, because the output of op amp as you can see via resistor R2 is connected to negative or inverting terminal, we can say negative feedback is there. Therefore, op amps are enforced to operate in linear region, which as a result, we benefit from virtual short, which means a voltage at positive terminal should be, I'm going to write it here. So let me actually, just to avoid too many stuff on this side, I'm going to shift it here. And I'm going to say, therefore, virtual short is valid for these op amps enforced by negative feedback and as a result positive and negative terminals of the op amp should have the same voltage so when we are saying that uh, a sine omega t is applied in differential fashion between the positive terminal of the two op amp then because of a virtual short that means this uh, input uh, ac voltage is also between the negative terminals of the two op amps as well and the, now you can see that between the negative terminals, we have just a series of R1, C1, uh, that this voltage is just ap applied across these. So from the perspective of circuit, I can think of as if we have input, let's say A sine uh, 2 pi FT, 2 pi F is omega, and then that's applied. across R1 series with C1, in this case C1 nominal 47 kilo, uh, microfarad. Okay, so uh, the combination of R1 C1 in series is forming a high pass filter, which is exactly what we want here. With proper, of course, uh, selection of values of these R1 and C1, so high pass filter. When the, the frequency F is very low, 
close to DC, the impedance of this capacitor, which is uh, Z cap, is 1 over JC omega for sinusoidal ST state analysis. When omega is pretty low, the impedance of capacitor is pretty high. Capacitor can be thought of as open, and therefore uh, there is no uh, current generated and there is no amplification. So we want, because we are interested in circuit operating between at least uh, 50 hertz and above, then we want the... Uh, the, the corresponding frequency for the pole associated with R1, C1 to be below 50 Hz. So, for instance, if I set C1 to 47 microfarad, then R1, for instance, 10 kilo ohm, uh, 1 kilo ohm, let's say, then what I can say is omega corresponding uh, to R1, C1, the 3 dB, let's say, uh, pole frequency, is 1 over uh, 1 kilo ohm, which means 10 to the power 3, and C1 is 47 microfarad, which means 10 to the power, 47 times 10 to the power minus 6, which is roughly on the order of, uh, say, I'm just approximating now, 1000 over 50, which means 20 radian per second. And uh, omega is 2 pi f, so this means 2 pi f is roughly uh, 20 radian per second. So f, if I, if I think of 2 pi on the order of 6, then f is roughly on the order of, let's say, uh, in this case, 3 hertz. And uh, if I want to, for instance, uh, the frequencies to be at least 10 times higher than this, so for example, if I say, uh, let's, so, so all I'm saying is this is the 3 dB pole corresponding to series of R1, C1, any frequency at least 10 times above this, we can think of uh, this cap as it's short and is not there. So therefore I would say for frequencies F much higher than 3 Hertz, uh, which I can say, for example, greater than or equal 30 Hertz, then C1 is short effectively or practically. So capacitor C1 is just not there, it's just short. All right, and instead we just have A sine 2 pi ft just applied, applied, applied across R1. So the circuit looks like this then, a very simplified fashion now that, uh, the, now that we know how the uh, DC and AC bias is, the DC bias and AC of the circuit is working. So we have the op amp one here, negative plus, and then effectively we have, I'm gonna think of it this way, we have voltage V, across resistor R1 and there you go this is the second op amp and we can think of resistor R2 here and resistor R2 here so and then of course we have the terminals that are connected to uh, that are connected to then the speaker here in the circuit. So I'm going to show a nominal speaker like this. Okay, so in this circuit, uh, what's happening is, and I'm, I'm, I'm intentionally not showing what's connected to positive terminal, because I, I already covered that. It doesn't mean it's not connected. I, I'm just showing the part that now is important for us. Now we have across R1 for the frequencies above 30 hertz, we have across R1, let's say the sinusoidal voltage is appearing like this and alternating like this between these two negative terminals of the 2 op amp, and the value of the voltage across this resistor R1 is just uh, A sine omega T, which I refer to it as V. Therefore, the current, AC current that is generated in this circuit is simply computed by dividing the voltage, the sinusoidal voltage across R1 by R1. So that current is going this way. So we can think of that current is generating a voltage drop across R2 and voltage drop across this R2 as well with the polarities, the nominal polarities that I'm showing. So therefore, the overall voltage uh, between the terminals, AC voltage between the terminals of the, uh, of the speaker can be computed. V out is... So it's a KVL, so I'm going to just put it here. Uh, using 
Kirchhoff voltage law, KVL, which means that V out is just some of the, if I traverse through R2, traverse through R1, traverse back to R2, some of these three voltages should be equal to V out. So V out is equal to, therefore, R2 and uh, I, the current that I just mentioned, sinusoidal current, plus the voltage across R1, which is simply the V, which is A sine omega T. So it's going to be then, it's going to be then V and another R2 times I. So it will be, it will be just R2 times I second time. So therefore we have two times R2 plus times I, and then I am going to substitute I with V1 over V over R1, and then plus V, which we have it as well. So therefore uh, what I got is V out is equal to one plus two R2 over R1 times V in, uh, or basically to just times A sine omega T, if we want to replace that as well. So V out is 1 plus 2 R2 over R1 times A sine omega T. The gain of this circuit, of course, is defined by 1 plus 2 R2 over R1. For instance, uh, for the sake of uh, gain setting, if we set R1 to, as an example, to 1 kilo ohm, the resistor here, then uh, we, for example, might want to set R2 as an example to 22 kilo ohm or 20 kilo ohm for both R2 resistors that we have in this circuit. Again, I recommend using low tolerance resistors. And just for the sake of impedance matching between the term input terminals of the op amp, if we apply 22 kilo ohm here, let's also apply 22 kilo ohm for this uh, DC uh, establishing resistor. Basically, this one is just for the sake of better stability and also setting the DC voltage at the uh, positive terminal to zero, and the same thing here. I recommend using op amps that are audio op amps and also the ones that has uh, low input offset and uh, low input noise. So with that, uh, I have decided about the components in the circuit. If we go with, say, R1, one kilo ohm, as I just showed you, and uh, let's say R2, uh, 22 kilo ohm, as I just showed, then as a result, the gain, which is just 1 plus 2 R2 over R1, becomes 1 plus 2 times 22 kilo ohm, divide by 1 kilo ohm, which is 22 times 2, 44, and therefore the gain is 45. So what does it mean? Okay, so it means that if, for instance, if I apply, as an example, if I apply 1 volt sine omega t, um, it, as an example, it doesn't mean we need to do 1 volt. Uh, 1 volt is nominal. Then what appears at the output would be a 45 volt. Uh, so across, let's say, these terminals, nominal polarity like this, it's an AC signal, so polarity will change. But the plus minus I'm showing is a nominal. This V out would be 45 volt. So uh, I'm going to show it here. Then it means if A is 1, this is 45. So we're going to get effectively 45 and then sine omega t at the output of this circuit. Uh, if we have 8 ohm standard equivalent resistance or resistor for the speaker, the wattage is computed by, so power delivered to, uh, delivered, let's say, to speaker is computed by, of course, it's an AC signal, so v, uh, v is the peak voltage divided by 2 times resistor of a speaker, which is then 45 volt is the peak to the power 2, divide by, say, 2 times 8 ohm. If we compute this, we end up with roughly 126.5 uh, watt, watts power delivered uh, to the speaker. So, the beauty of this circuit is if it is designed properly with the proper choice of op amps and components, then with single supply, we can deliver actually a sizable wattage to a speaker, sometimes on the order of um, even close to half a kilowatt. But it depends on, the, of course, the proper selection of the op amps that can work with those high voltages and uh, potentially high currents.
okay i'm uh, I'm, I hope that this example is uh, helpful in terms of showing how a bridge audio amplifier is uh, designed and is functional and is, is working uh, with just two op amps. Thanks for watching.